we hear from a couple of longtime district leaders about how Arizona can finally turn the corner. They say the time is now. And the issue is money. Gaining ground for weeks, the powerful Red for Ed movement forced the governor to the table with a promising proposal. Pay increase of 20% by 2020. That 20% hike would bring teachers up, but they'd still be below the national average. Under the governor's plan, new education spending would top more than $200 million over the next two years. And a Valley District CFO says it's a good place to start. It doesn't replace all the money that we've lost over the years, um, but in the 13 years that I've been doing school finance, uh, this is the most money that I've seen come in, in in one given year. That is if the plan goes through and how each of the state's more than 200 districts decides to use it. Do you want to take the money and divide it up amongst all employees, which lowers the percentage, or um, do you risk the fact that you hurt overall morale by only giving the money to teachers? And teacher pay, as we've heard, only part of the problem. The money for books and desks, chairs and computers, it falls under separate funding and has been slashed more than 85 percent. Uh, Ten years ago with, with capital funding, uh, we have a per pupil capital amount, $562 uh, ten years ago. Today it's at about $70. The governor's plan aims to bring back millions of those dollars cut during the recession. But that formula is from 20 years ago and doesn't account for today's dollars. What's the biggest criticism? Uh, that it's not enough. The funding crisis puts district leaders like Kyrene's Dr. Jan Vesely in a tricky spot. We receive a fixed amount, um, and again, it's about $1,000 less per student than it was about 10 years ago. That leaves some tough decisions for superintendents. What is that like for you? It's very difficult because we have had um, to really make very difficult choices about what we're able to offer and what we're not able to offer. She says there is no level playing field when you compare districts, and Kyrene is one of the lucky ones thanks to bonds and overrides. Had it not been for the, you know, the support of our community, we would be um, in a very, very different place as many other districts are in the state of Arizona. When she took the position, Dr. Vesley asked for an outside audit of every dollar spent and then reworked their finances. They put more into instruction and less into administration than the state's average, getting rid of several positions at the district office. And for the first time, they put teachers on a salary schedule last year to recognize their education and experience and help keep them on the job. Um, I have never seen the amount and the degree of teachers leaving this profession as I have over the last several years. And she expects that will only get worse as the current generation of teachers retires and new ones are nowhere to be found. Now, all three universities have said to me, I have no pipeline for you. Vesley says 88% of her budget goes to pay employees, mostly teachers, with not much left for the buses, the lunches, buildings, safety and technology. That's why she and other experts are convinced the issue is not spending, it's our state revenue. And while I think that the, um, that the state is doing everything they can for education funding, I think maybe the pie is a little too small, that we might want the pie to, to grow a little bigger so that we have more um, to be able to offer to um, public education. Uh, we took a lot of deep cuts during the recession. We took some hidden cuts during the recession that, that still haven't been discussed. And because of those cuts, uh, people still want to see us get back to the pre-recession levels and then grow from there. And while money is clearly what teachers lack most, these days, Vesley says, that is tied to another notable decline. And today, I think if you talk to teachers and you ask them, you know, what is their biggest frustration and they're going to tell you respect. She argues a fair paycheck leads to good schools and communities. Thus, investing in children is one of the building blocks of a strong economy. Because if you think about the impact that a quality foundation and a quality education makes for a child and then you roll that forward uh, 20 or 30 or 40 years, that is going to have a significant impact um, on our country.